Hello, y'all. Welcome to the first video in our declutter challenge of 2023. If y'all were around here with me three years ago, we did this at the beginning of 2020. Uh, prior to the pandy, we didn't even know what was about to hit us. But here we are. We've moved houses. Our situation has changed in terms of space and all of that. And well, I feel like I've been trying to fit a square peg in a round hole for basically two and a half years. It's just that time for a declutter. So I thought you guys might want to join me if you have not already gotten the free workbook that goes along with this challenge, then check the description box uh, where you can sign up to join us on the declutter challenge. You can take it at your own pace. You do not have to keep up with me or do exactly what I'm doing. I've got all kinds of checklists and trackers in there so that you can make this work for you. But for me, I am starting with my clothing because to me, this is just kind of one of those things that is very overwhelming to me. As you can see, my closet is is stuffed, okay? I did a closet makeover a couple years ago and put a closet system in there, but it's just stuffed. I ended up having a clothing rack out here in my room to hang extra stuff on. It's a little tough for me because this is kind of part of what I do for a living. You know, I'm not a capsule wardrobe person. I'm not somebody that's going to have 10 tops and five pairs of pants and that's it. It's just, it's not who I am. And that's kind of what I want to say too, as we get into this and we start going through things and decluttering, you know, there's so many books, there's so much content out there about this. There's programs and courses and there's just so much. And what I've learned over the last few years is that you have got to make it your own. You've got to make it work for you and you gotta be realistic about who you are. They talk about like your fantasy self, keeping things for your fantasy self is never a good idea. So you wanna be realistic, but you can also fantasize yourself into being somebody who has five tops and five bottoms when that's not who you are at all. And you're gonna end up uh, regretting that and it's going to be you know something that you're not happy with in the end so for me I will say and y'all tell me down below in the comments if you relate to this if you if you understand or if you agree or or feel like this is you too is that I kind of have like three different uh, parts of my life that I dress for if that makes any sense so if I am farming it up you know doing my farm stuff my homestead stuff my gardening like all my outdoor stuff I've got a whole, I don't want to say like a whole wardrobe, but kind of. I've got work pants for painting projects and work pants for outdoor summer and winter. That kind of clothing looks very different uh, depending on the season. And it looks very different than the cuter tops. If I'm going to film a video and or going to church or going out with friends. Um, and then I've got my comfy everyday clothes that are, you know, kind of just what I throw on to mom it up, you know, doing homeschool and cooking and cleaning and just momming it up or running errands, that kind of thing. Uh, so I feel like I almost have like three different wardrobes and they don't really cross over well. Anyways, I feel like that's always my struggle is that depending on the time of year when I do this declutter and what I'm currently got going on, it can be very tempting to get rid of a bunch of things being like, I don't need that. But yeah, you do. And a couple of months from now, I'll regret getting rid of that because I did need it. So one of the things that I share in the decluttering workbook uh, that I would encourage y'all to do is if you are like that, if you really struggle, I keep a bin of sort of like maybes. It's what I consider to be my maybe get rid of stuff. And it's things that I'm just not quite ready to let go of yet that I really do think I may want to keep, but I'm not sure. It's just, it's a maybe. And so I put my those items into a bin that I stuff away somewhere, put it in the garage, put it under the bed, something like that. And in a couple of months, I set a reminder on my phone. So like I'll go on my calendar and say three months from now, I want to go and look at that maybe bin and see if I still want those things or if I feel ready to get rid of them. All right. So as you can see, we're kind of at that point. Again, I just wanted to like share the reality of this is that you will hit a point where you're like, what in the hell was I thinking? Why did I do this? That's the point that I'm currently at in this video where I am looking at all of the mess I've made and wondering why on earth I chose to do this project. It's it's very different to do this in a tight space. Our last master bedroom was huge. We had a very large master bedroom. Uh, our master bedroom now is uh, definitely, uh, you know, half 
or less even, I would say probably a third the size of our old master bedroom. It feels very cramped and stuffed trying to do this, but it must be done. So we go on. I just want you to know that the feeling of wanting to quit about halfway through is pretty universal. We all feel that. Uh, in my last one, I dumped everything out at once. I couldn't really do that here because of the size of our room. So I did have to kind of take it section at a time. But that's kind of how I like to do this is dump everything out from one section. So from your dresser or from your closet uh, and go through it in piles like that if you can. Uh, it's, it's tougher to just sit there and take it out piece by piece. That's not the best way to do it in my opinion. It's not the best way for me to do it. It is better for me to drop it all in a pile and force myself to touch and look at and pick up and refold every single piece. Because if I just leave it in the drawer and try to make decisions based on, I you know, I know what that shirt is or I bought, it, it's just different. You got to hold it up. You got to feel it. That's like the KonMari or whatever, where you've got to, does it spark joy? Uh, which is not my method, by the way, just so you know, because overalls covered in paint don't spark joy, but they are 100% necessary. It's really important to be realistic with yourself in this and to not get too caught up in how other people are decluttering. There are so many you know, great tips and methods and things out there for doing this. And if you need that help, absolutely, you know, take it. If it feels right to you, if you're like, yeah, you know what, that sounds like something I could live with or a good method for me. But don't feel bad if that's not your method. And if you don't want to be that cutthroat or get down to a minimalist wardrobe, I do want to say that kind of at the start of this decluttering series that for me, decluttering isn't only for minimalists. And I do think it kind of gets that rap that like decluttering goes hand in hand with minimalism and that you declutter so that you can live a minimalist life. And I, I always hate kind of, I, I'm not trying to be a contrarian. I'm just trying to be honest about who and what I am. And I am for sure a maximalist. I'm not a minimalist. I see the value in decluttered spaces. I know the clarity that it brings to your mind. They've proven that if you are working in a decluttered, very organized type, minimalist type space, your brain is more productive. You can get through things much faster and you can be much more productive in that kind of space. However, creativity seems to flourish and blossom and do better in not such a neat and tidy space. And I can totally see that. I can totally see how the two sides of my personality, I get all kinds of ideas. I look around at like, you know, my cluttered bookshelf with all my little trinkets and my books and stuff like that. And it sparks ideas for me and I feel very creative. But if I wanna actually get stuff done, it, that's harder for me to do because those things that spark creativity also become distractions for me. So for me, it's about determining which spaces need to be very decluttered and sort of minimal and which spaces don't have to be like that. So for me, it's just not an all or nothing. And maybe that resonates with you. Maybe you feel the same way that like the whole decluttering minimalism thing is great, but it's it's not an all or nothing and it doesn't have to be. Uh, so I just want to encourage you in that. There's other ways to do it. There's not one right answer. Uh, but for me, it's about trimming down, getting rid of things. Uh, again, we all struggle with the not wanting to get rid of things, feeling that guilt of like, well, I paid for this. And the declutter experts and stuff are right. It's, you know, it's a sunk cost, essentially. You've already spent the money. You keeping it and having to find a place for it and feel guilt about it and all of that isn't making it any more useful to you. It's not giving you the money back. So definitely don't be afraid to let go of stuff. Um, what I'm doing now is hanging some shelves. So this closet system that I put in, when I put in one side of it, I, I, I guess the drywall and the drywall screws, they weren't holding well. The whole thing was really on that side about to come down after a couple of years. It was way too, I guess, too much weight on it. And so I did kind of shift some things over there because I'm redoing my boys' closet. So I'm able to use some of the items from these closet systems in other places in my home. I'm not just getting rid of them. I'm just shifting them. So I just kind of went back to like a standard. I ran to Home Depot and got like a standard bar and put that on the other side. So you'll see that at the end. And then over here, here, I used repurposed some shelves from our pantry because there'll be a pantry video coming up soon. We ended up getting a, a pantry system. And so the shelving that we had put up in there, we are repurposing in various places all over our house. And so some of the shorter shelves I ended up moving in here. 
And I did also take my closet door off. So my closet door opened in and it meant that that whole area behind the door was almost like useless really. So I took my closet door off. I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to flip it so that it opens outward. My husband's closet door opens outward. So I don't see a reason why I can't just switch mine to do that. Or I may get a like barn door and do like a sliding door over the closet. We'll just kind of have to see. As you can see, there's not a lot of space on the left side. It goes right into the bathroom. So I kind of have to figure out how I want that. But for right now, the door is off the hinges. It's just not on at all. And it honestly makes the closet feel so much bigger and like I have so much more space to work with in there, which was fantastic. You know, you gotta do what works for you. We don't have to follow the rules. We can color outside the lines, my friends. Don't forget when you're doing your clothing declutters to tackle clothes that maybe you've put away. So underneath my bed, I have like swimsuits, swim cover-ups in these uh, under bed storage containers. I've got uh, like summer shoes, sandals, uh, and summer clothes, like shorts and t-shirts and stuff. So don't forget about some of those areas that you might, those like hidden areas that you might have put clothing for different seasons, etc. So that's what I'm doing is just going through and making decisions about all of those items uh, that are summer or swimsuit, etc., etc. And now for my crazy drawer <laughs> where I keep my like wallets and scarves and belts and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it was very organized when I first started this drawer, but then I started kind of just haphazardly throwing things in there and it got to be a mess. So I've got to clean this out. I love that handheld iron right there. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I got that from Amazon. It is the perfect, just quick iron to fix something. Travel iron, you can steam, it does different fabrics. I love it so much. But yeah, got to go through all this stuff, get rid of uh, wallets I no longer want or need, and uh, belts. You know, I didn't honestly declutter a lot of belts because they all do kind of have a purpose for different types of outfits. I don't wear them a ton, but it's kind of one of those things that like when you want it or when you need it, you need it. Again, if I got rid of everything that I didn't wear frequently, I would be screwed <laughs> at certain times when you really need that item. The good news is that I did actually go through my jewelry uh, probably like a month or two ago. So I don't really have much that I have to do here. I got a new jewelry holder that's like a mirror thing that goes on the wall. So uh, I've got this jewelry box and the one that goes on the wall that's a mirror. So don't forget about things like jewelry and socks and underwear and belts and all of those random accessories they need to be dealt with as well. Here's kind of a final look at the closet. I still have some more things I wanna do as far as like actually 
organizing things. I've gotten some fun gadgety things to uh, organize things better. But uh, this is really honestly just a sigh of like whew, relief to me that I feel like things are organized. They're sorted. I can see a lot of things. Um, I still have a little bit more, you know, fine tuning that I want to do. But I mean, you're going to see at the end how many bags I got rid of. And for that, I am proud of myself. My goal is to get to a place where I don't have to have any summer or winter things stored away in off season that I can kind of just keep things out all the time because I don't have so much that I have to swap. But I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll ever get there. Let's just, I'm just going to be very like realistic with you and honest with you. I don't know if I'll get there, but someday I'd like to. So this is kind of a final look. And then you'll see at the end here, if you've downloaded the workbook, we've got our bag tracker in there. And uh, you're going to see that I added, I believe it was three and a half donation bags and three garbage bags and three and a half donation bags. So quite pleased with myself. That's it for this first video in our decluttering series. I hope that you guys will subscribe and join me for more. Download that free workbook if you want to actually do it with me or if you just want to watch and live vicariously, that's totally fine as well. But be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see y'all again very soon. Bye.